Oh. How, how many times do you get up to speak and he says, tell them how old you are? <laughs> I, turned, I turned 76 just a week ago. But I still feel 26. And, and I have felt 26 actually for the last 50 years. I haven't mentally, physically changed in that respect. In fact, just to prove it to myself, I went down in August and had a stress test. I hadn't had one in 10 years. And I can still keep up with the average 26-year-old. Uh, so I'm, uh, you know, feeling good about it. Well, about 16 years ago, I um, was invited to go to the Ukraine to study what they call microwave resonance therapy. And I spent two weeks there and was treated royally. And the problem was they wanted me to bring home 14 of their microwave devices for which they wanted $50,000 each. And I was not impressed enough that they were worth that. So I looked at what else can we do? And I talked with an engineering friend of mine, Saul Liss, and I said, how do you produce these frequencies? He said, all you have to do is put a high voltage through a spark gap. I reached into my file cabinet and pulled out an old Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator, which I'd bought 30 years earlier. Lakovsky, in 1925, published his work, The Secret of Life, and he published at that time that human DNA frequency is 50 plus gigahertz. He moved to this country in 1939 and at one of the New York University hospitals he and colleagues treated some 300 people with major illnesses, cancer, brain tumors, etc. and claimed a remarkable success rate. In 1942 he was struck down uh, by a cab in New York City. In fact, some people have <clears throat> suggested that maybe the FDA took him out. But at any rate, the research stopped, and to my knowledge, has never been replicated uh, since that time. So I went to our IRB, and I asked, you know, about it, and I, I talked with them and showed them the work that he had done, and it turned out that these frequencies are well within the safety limits that are established by our FDA. Basically, the Ukrainian nuclear physicists had determined that human DNA actually is between 54 and 78. And they were mostly using a random output of these frequencies at one billionth of a watt. Now, in this country, we measure them uh, in decibels, and that billionth of a watt is approximately 75 decibels of energy in the 54 to 78 uh, billion cycle per second range. And I <clears throat> obtained a tetronic signal analyzer so I could measure these things and play with them. And according to the Ukrainians, uh, who had treated, when I was there 16 years ago, 200,000 people applying these frequencies in a random fashion, one billionth of a watt per centimeter squared through a one millimeter little probe that they applied to acupuncture points, they were claiming cures of everything. In fact, I treated, among other things, while I was in the training sessions there, I treated a former communist boss who had a peptic ulcer. They had a remarkable success in treating peptic ulcers, 10 treatments, two weeks, and peptic ulcers cured with nothing but application of these frequencies. I treated a woman with rheumatoid arthritis, who had been originally treated ten times two years earlier. Her symptoms had come back very mild at that time, and I was involved in treating her and watching a remarkable variety of things that were being treated. Alcoholism. They claimed that if they just treated an alcoholic ten times, they got a 50% success rate long term. If they could get them at the time when they're dried out, and were just beginning to crave about the 10th day when they were going, hey, craving alcohol again. If they could treat it at that time, they had a 94% success rate. With narcotic addicts, and I visited with several of those who had been treated three years earlier, they had a 56% success rate with 10 treatments. Treatment takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And so basically, 
what they're doing is applying ten times what you would get just sitting out in the sun and claiming great success. Well, I had this idea that it might be easier than the Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator to put it in a copper room. So we built this little room. It's just about a little less than five feet square, 48 inches high, with a copper pyramid on the top, and hooked it up to a Tesla coil. And I had permission from our IRB to treat 75 people. We put 25 people with rheumatoid arthritis who had failed conventional medicine. All of them had had steroids, methotrexate, whatever had been offered. They all still had active rheumatoid. In fact, our most successful patient was a juvenile rheumatoid, 16 years of age, who was totally incapacitated. Two weeks of treatment, five days a week for two weeks, and she was begging to go back to physical ed at school. I said, well, why don't we wait a couple of months at least? And so we treated 25 people with rheumatoid arthritis that had failed conventional medicine. We treated 25 people with depression who had failed antidepressants. And we treated 25 people who had failed back surgery and all the other treatments for chronic back pain. We had a 70% success rate. And I thought, well, you know, how will I ever get this through the FDA? And I figured, it's impossible. They'll, they'll, you know, like Wilhelm Reich, they'll put me in prison for even thinking about it.